let's just go through the basics of how uh, a day ahead auction for electricity might work. The buyer sets the quantity needed for the next day. And this might be in five minute intervals. That's how it's done in uh, certainly in uh, some US markets and in European markets. Uh, the buyer is a grid management agency and accepts, has a forecast for the power that's going to be needed in each five minute block throughout the day and accepts bids for power at a certain amount of power at certain prices from different generating units uh, for each of those five minute increments throughout the day. And of course this will be done, this will be done partly by region uh, because we need to take into account transmission constraints uh, across different parts of the region. So there will be regional component to these bids. Sellers bid uh, a quantity and a price. So the sellers of electricity are saying, I'll provide this electricity, uh, this much electricity, if I can get at least this amount for it. I'll be happy to take more if that's the closing price at auction, but I will sell it if the price is at least this amount. The auctioneer sorts the bids from low to high and accepts the low bids up until the amount of electricity needed for that five minute period. And that, that point where the last bid is accepted or the first bid is rejected sets the price for the auction. So that's the uniform price and all sellers receive that same price. So whatever the sellers bid for their, um, the price they're willing to accept to provide certain blocks of electricity, everyone receives the same closing price. And uh, that's the value of the first rejected bid or sometimes when these auctions are implemented that might be the value of the last accepted bid. That's a, uh, generally speaking those will probably be the same. So let's just look an example, uh, at an example. I have um, a picture here of a, uh, an auction for a certain amount of power. Uh, here it looks like uh, we're purchasing about 35 units, or maybe it's yeah, something around there, and the question is um, uh, what are we going to pay for those units of uh, electricity? So we hold an auction, and it's a sealed bid uniform price auction. So the sellers of electricity announce how much a price and a quantity for each little tranche of electricity. So uh, I'll provide 100 megawatts at 6 cents, uh, uh, 100 kilowatts at 6 cents, uh, another 100 at 7 cents, and so forth and so on. So they make their bids, and so we have uh, a stack of bids that the auctioneer has received. The auctioneer sorts them from low to high and starts accepting the bids up to the point where the auctioneer has the 35 megawatt hours needed for this five minute period uh, on this date and then stops accepting the bids. And the price is set by, in this case, the last unit accepted and the first unit rejected are the same because there are several units right in there that are available uh, and so that price is set uh, here at eight dollars and fifty cents. So keep in mind that these solar generators down here who bid very low cost for providing the uh, electricity are still receiving the 850 even though their bid uh, was at or close to zero for the electricity they're providing. That's how a uniform price auction works and that way the providers of low marginal cost energy have incentive to go ahead and bid actual costs 
rather than guess at the closing price and change their bids to try to match that closing price. And that has very nice features because as we work up the bid stack and get to the closing bid, then we get a very good measure of the cost of the last unit brought into service. That's going to set the price of electricity in this market in an auction. And that's just what we're after. If you go back and remember the scarcity pricing story, we want the price to be the marginal cost of the last unit brought into service.